Broncos win. It's weird to say. 31 to 28 over the Bears, but did they really win? Broncos get their first win in Soldier Field against Justin Fields and the Bears. Uh, this is a game that really it wasn't very fun as a Bronco fan because it didn't really feel like the team won because <laughs> they sucked still. It was uh, the first half. Uh, it was really the tale of two halves. First half was was pretty miserable. First quarter was fine. The Broncos took a 7-0 lead, but the second quarter is where things got out of hand and the Bears scored 21 unanswered to go up 21-7 to at the half. And what's a little bit more concerning about this is the fact that uh, Justin Fields was perfect in the first half, a minus a Hail Mary in completion, which now makes that two straight weeks that minus one Hail Mary, they haven't been able to force an incomplete pass in the first half. So uh, quarterbacks over the last two weeks, I believe it's 32 in, of 33 in the first half. Yeah, not great. Uh, second half, though, things started coming along. Bears did take 28 to 7 lead, but after that point, the Broncos started to figure it out. The offense started going. Defense got involved with a touchdown. Bing, bang, boom. And they come back all the way to kick a field goal. It helped that the Bears choked this one away mightily. And they really, they out Broncoed the Broncos today. Though, there was a lot of positives in this game for the Broncos. And I'm, I want to get to those before I talk about the negatives that I saw in this game. A couple positives. For one, they kept fighting. One thing that they, it's been thrown out is that this team's given up on the coaches. The fact that they just fought back from 28-7, to seven, if there's ever a time that you'd give up, you're down 28-7 to seven to a team that sucked, the, a quarterback who has been absolutely atrocious for the most part, and you're giving him his best game of his career. They fought back. And they made this a game. I will give them the credit there. Another thing uh, from this game, Javonta Williams injured it doesn't look like a serious injury, but in his stead, undrafted free agent running back, Jaleel McLaughlin. We talked about him in the preseason. This kid's good. He was uh, seven carries, 72 yards on the day, and he just he also caught a touchdown, three catches, 32 yards in receiving. I like what I've seen out of McLaughlin, and at the very least, he's kind of taken over that role, I think, of the number two back behind Samaj, well, instead of Samaj Piran, behind Javonta Williams, because Samaj Piran hasn't been all that good, honestly, for the Broncos this season. And the other really bright point for this team is Marvin Mims Jr. He has been the best receiver for this team. It hasn't been Cortland Sutton, it hasn't been Jerry Judy, it's been Marvin Mims. He has been the most dynamic player on this offense uh, on special teams and on uh, offense this game he had four, two catches 47 yards so a good game from him and I, I love seeing that out of Marvin Mims this is a, a receiving core that needs kind of a shot in the arm Jerry Judy hasn't lived up to expectation Cortland Sutton since injuries hasn't been the same and the other positive is Russell Wilson 21 of 28 223 yards three touchdowns no picks only got sacked one time so a lot of good things. So why did I open the show with saying they won, but did they win? Well, you still gave up 28 points to the Bears. This defense is still an issue. Let me go through Justin Fields' stats. 20 of 35, 335 yards, four touchdowns, average nearly five yards per attempt, a 132.7 QBR. They allowed Khalil Herbert nearly six yards per carry on the ground. What are we doing? DJ Moore, 131 yards. What are we doing? I want to be positive about this team. I want to look at the good things that this offense has done. It's an improved offense, but the defense, it's still struggling. And more and more when I look at this team, I, I start to worry that it's not Vance Joseph. That it's the talent. And I talked about this in the last video. This is a team that has not been able to pressure the quarterback. If you cannot get to the quarterback, you're going to make everyone look like Patrick Mahomes. These are NFL-level quarterbacks. If they have protection, if they have a pocket, they are going to be able to make the throws that they need. Broncos have just been gifting uh, teams 
clean pockets. And we know that when they get pressure, they can be good because look at what happened to Justin Fields once the Broncos got pressure. He folded a pick, a fumble touchdown. They couldn't do anything once Nick Benito started getting involved, started gaining. And, and speaking of Nick Benito, looking like he's going to have a bigger role going forward, Randy Gregory cut. And I said this on, on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, but I think that cutting Randy Gregory, a guy who's been paid a lot of money, is a as a statement move by Sean Payton saying, I don't care how much money you're making. I don't care who you are. If you're not producing, you're not on this team. Your job is in jeopardy. And that's good because the team has had issues. Um, as we talked about, 28 points to the Bears is not good. Only winning by three points in a game that was nicknamed the Tank Bowl because people feel like whoever lost this game would win, get Caleb Williams. That's not good. Yes, it's a win, but you shouldn't feel very good about this. It should be a stepping stone to bigger things. But if you can't build off of this performance, if you keep having first half performances like you did um, against the Bears, against the really the Dolphins too, you have to you have to move forward. We haven't seen the Broncos put together a complete game this season. You go back to the Commanders game. The Commanders game they put together a great first half and they put together a great like last eight minutes. But between that, they folded. The Bears game, absolutely terrible first half, great second half. They obviously scored, you know, what was it, 24 unanswered to end up coming away with a win. And their schedule does not get easier. Next, they have the Jets at home. That should be a game that you win if you're expecting to get back on pace. Then you have Kansas City. Uh, and in between Kansas City, you have Packers. And then Kansas City again. Uh, that's a really tough next four games for the Broncos. This to me is a team that's going to be middle of the road. And that's not very exciting to say. Exciting to have a playoff team. It's exciting to have a terrible team in some ways because you're going to get a quarterback. You're going to go get Caleb Williams. I don't think this team is going to be bad enough to get Caleb Williams this season. I don't think they're going to be good enough to make the playoffs in a competitive AFC. I think this is just going to be more of what we've seen. I think it's going to be kind of middle of the road unless they can really figure something out. And I really hope guys like Damar e. Mathis have not been good enough. Uh, obviously, I, I like the playing time we've been seeing from Drew Sanders. He hasn't been what uh, I think his potential is, but I think that has more to do with him just being a very, very raw player. I wouldn't be too concerned about that. Jonathan Cooper, uh, obviously, he got a fumble recovery. So, you know, go with good Nick Benier, though, two and a half sacks. He is a guy that is uh, he's pivotal to how this team is going to do down the stretch. This team is going to have to get pressure if they're going to improve. If Zach Wilson can sit back and sling this football in this West Coast style offense where he's, you know, if he starts getting more comfortable with this West Coast style offense, quick release, if they cannot make him uncomfortable, it's going to be a long, long season. And so I, I, I saw a lot of people on Twitter, a lot of Broncos fans saying that the Broncos should tank. I saw a poll that it was like 40% that responded said that they wish the Broncos had lost because if the Broncos had lost, they'd be in the Caleb Williams sleep, sweepstakes. And to that, I say it's too early. We are four games into the season. They are three. They're one in three. That is not good. We have seen absolutely terrible games. However, I'm going to put my positivity cap and hat on. Look at the schedule. He played the Raiders. You lost by one point. You played the Commanders. You lost by two points. You played the Dolphins. You lost by 50 points. You played the Bears. You lost by three. You won by three points. They have had close games in all but one performance this season. Now, Dolphins games are inexcusable. There's no way to excuse that. However, they're close. They're not getting blown out. They have talent and they've improved on offense they took an offense that was uh, and credit to Sean Payton he took an offense that looked absolutely abysmal last season and made it functional now they need to put a complete game together and this game against the Jets is going to be pivotal if you cannot put a complete game together you're you're, you're done for and the season is over because the defense still needs to do better but I do think I more and more think this is a talent issue on defense. Uh, I don't think it's time to tank. I, I I didn't feel great after the Bears game. I had a couple days to percolate, and that's kind of why I took a few days to make this video is because I needed some time to think about this game and how I felt about it because 
I didn't want to come off too high or too low after the Bears game. I definitely reacted to the Dolphins game, and I'm trying to take a more metered approach. This team is improved in a lot of ways. It's the defense that's absolutely abysmal, but besides being abysmal, they are very close to being 3-1. and one. And let's flip the script here. Let's flip the script. If the Broncos beat the Raiders, right? Okay, they don't miss that extra point. They end up winning the game. Okay, 1-0. and up. They don't blow it to the commanders. Or they do, but they come back at the end. They score or the two-point conversion. Um, he either makes the right read, throws it to Judy, or the two-point conversion. They get to do it again because of pass interference. Okay, 2-0. and up. Then you lose the Dolphins in historic fashion. Then you beat the Bears. Now you're 3-1. and one. And we're going, okay, it's a little bit of a fraudulent 3-1, but hey, 3-1. It's not too bad. But the fact that we're sitting here at 1-3 is why you want to panic. Hold off. The Broncos, if the Broncos come out of this next four games with three wins, I feel good about this team. Not great, but I feel good about the direction they're going to. Because the, the Jets, tough playoff caliber defense, and an offense that gave Kansas City a run for its money. Say what you will, but they gave Kansas City a run for its money. Then you have Kansas City. Uh, I just chalked those two games up for a loss. I mean, the Broncos haven't beat the Chiefs since 2015. Uh, it was uh, September 17, 2015. They have lost 15 straight against the Chiefs, which is the longest streak in a series history uh the longest streak before that was i think the broncos lost 11 straight back in the 60s so yeah this is that's a domination so just chalk those up to two losses but if the broncos leave that second chief game at three and five i feel good about where this team is headed and i think that's all we can ask for right now we're still going to be talking about draft, and we're still going to be talking about Caleb Williams. But, you know, I think I think there's reason to be optimistic as a Bronco fan, even though it doesn't look like it. And I'm going to preach the message of optimism here. That this team is better than they have looked. But they're worse than they should be, if that makes any sense. One thing that's a bit concerning about the Broncos is the time that they've spent with the lead. Uh, the only one game this season have they led for most of the game. They led for 24 minutes in the Raider game. They led for 36 or well, 37 minutes in the, in the Washington game. They didn't lead for any time in the Miami game. Uh, in fact, they, oh, it was only tied for a minute in 23 seconds. And then they led for 16 minutes and 35 seconds in the Bears game. So that needs to be improved. They need to get better at playing with Lee. But I appreciate from this team that we have not seen them quit. And that is something hard to do when you start off like the Broncos have. Quick look ahead to the future. This Broncos team is going to take on the Jets. We touched on a little bit in this video, but the Jets, Zach Wilson and company, barely lost to the Chiefs 23-20. And a game that I know a lot of Jets fans feel like they should have won just because they were in position. This is a game the Broncos need to win. And they need to win it because their schedule doesn't allow them to lose this game. They need to win it for their own confidence. They need to win it to show that they're taking that step forward. And if they continue to take the step forward, I will continue to be positive. But if they lose this game against the Jets, I am flipping my lead again on the next recap.